Come in. Welcome. Welcome to Mystery Theater. I'm Hyman Brown. Welcome to the sounds of suspense, to the fear you can hear. Make yourself comfortable, for there are ill winds blowing outside. This is a tale of a titanic struggle between two colossal forces, one natural, the other supernatural. The prize, a girl's soul. And in the clash of fire and water, there is the very devil to pay. Come with me now to the faraway Firth in Scotland to meet the first of the forces. It's the tide. It comes in faster than an express train. Is it always like this? Twice a day. Doesn't it ever break? It will, when it gets just about abreast of us. Isn't it exciting? That's one word for it. That's why you don't dare go out on the flats on foot. If the tide was due, you'd never make it ashore. Our mystery drama, Speak of the Devil, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Jada Rowland and Nick Pryor. I'll be back shortly with Act One. They say he who dreams on the Solway will wake in another world. Not only is the tide a terror, but so are the quicksands. And far worse than either, the bogies, the warlocks, the unnamed things that haunt Scottish history. The Scots word for our story is eldritch. It means uncanny, eerie, frightful, otherworldly. If you'll put out the light, Mrs. Petrie. Hold my hand, Mike. You'd better hold both mine. Why? You can't trust me in the dark. I'm sorry, Colonel Bruce. Now, Mike, Mary Ellen, I know you two young ones think a seance is a mite daft. But it's not the way the Colonel, Mrs. Petrie, and I feel. Well, then maybe we'd better not stay. Oh, no. We need five of the circle. It's a blessing you're here. But please, be serious. All of us have made contact with your dearest ones who have passed on through my control. Control? That's a messenger who brings us messages. Anatu. He once was a slave in Babylon. Babylon? This is scary. Hang in, darling. Now, may we all join hands, please. I'm asking you not to break the chain of contact now. Clear your minds. Make them a blank. A quiet place. I'm reaching now. Reaching away and above and out and over from here to the bonny, bonny other place that lies beyond our kin. We're biding here, Anatu, asking you back into our circle. Will you not come back? To us again. Most precious lady from across centuries, the time is not right, not right now. I beg you, Gishbar is breathing fire tonight. No, there is evil. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, in heaven's name Someone get the light uh, Yes, yes It burned, it burned Ellen, oh. where's that damn light? Mary Ellen, are you all right? Yes, sir What's all that smoke? Oh, that's just the incense we burn I'm the one to blame For meddling in the business of the Lord 
will not ever have a seance in this house again. I am afraid I loosed some devil out of hell this night. Ouch. Oh, don't wriggle so much. You stuck the pin in me, Aunt Jeannie. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellen. <laughs> oh, but it'll take more than a pinprick to burst your happiness. Thank you, Aunt Jeannie, for letting me come home to be married. And for such a heavenly day. Oh, well, I'll accept the thanks for bidding you back to where you grew up. When Dad died so suddenly, I I was lost. I didn't know what to do. Well, you did just the right thing. You came home. You're two modern young people who are a lot smarter than we old people are. And as proud I am to be part of the gamble you're making in your lives. I am all goosebumps. I'll get back into my jeans and sweater. I've got a skin, just like I had last Wednesday night. Oh, don't mention it. I should never have had you children in that circle. It was so scary. What happened? I don't know. It was some kind of trick, wasn't it? I don't play tricks. Well, it... It was Maggie, your mother, who had the second sight, you know. That wee wisp, so delicate and so... so vibrant. When she died, it tore the heart out of me. But Will went off to America and left me to bring you up. Well, it... it put my heart back. And then when you were 15 and almost grown up and he wanted you to join him, I... I was left alone again. How could I stop you going? I didn't want to go. I know, but you were his flesh and blood. I found a way out of my loneliness. Nights when the roar of the tide used to come boiling up the firth outside the windows there. I thought I could hear Maggie calling to me. Or when the wind was skirling out of the northeast, I'd hear her voice on the wings of the blow. And I began to think maybe I had the call, too. That's when I started the seances. Until the other night? Yes. I'll never hold a seance again. So the subject is closed. I realize I'm just a foolish old woman. I've never been so scared. Well, promise me to put it out of your mind. What's past is past. Your future is all that matters. It seems so right to be back. As if... As if something were calling me. Oh, you're oh. cold. I'll stir up the fire. No. No, don't bother. I just miss my American central heating. I think I'll go outside in the sun for a minute or two. Oh, go take a good brisk turn down the road while I finish this hem. That's a good idea. Ah, but don't go down the first road. Take the high road. Why? Well... I saw your Michael off this morning for the Solway. You don't want to run into the bridegroom on the wedding day. It's bad luck. Kiss me, Ellen. And Janie thinks it's bad luck for the bride and groom to see each other on the wedding day. You can't fault that. Back in Nebraska, my mother used to feel the same way. But that's just old-fashioned. And Aunt Jeannie something else? Darling, your Aunt Jeannie sure is something else. Good or bad? <laughs> About 90% good. I just don't dig the spirit kick. We won't have any more of that. It was awful, though, wasn't it? That's all kind of self-hypnosis. But that terrible, raspy voice. Whatever it was saying. Helen, there wasn't any voice. You didn't hear it? I heard something that sounded like your aunt choking herself to death. But the first voice. Oh, that. That's a, just the old girl practicing a little ventriloquism. No. No, that awful burning smell. Well, I will admit I like the Hare Krishna incense better. Come on, Ellen, let's forget all that mumbo jumbo. Hey, dig that crazy character out there. Fishing in those little pools on the flats. What's crazy about that? On horseback? But everyone does because of the tide. The tide? I forgot. If we hadn't been up in Glasgow wedding shopping, I'd have shown it to you. Look out there to the west. 
If that gilly is up on his horse, it must be... Oh, yes. Here it comes. And there he goes. You'd think the devil was on his tail. What's his hurry? Look. The tidal bore. It's coming. You mean that big wave down at the mouth of the estuary? Yes, it's the tide. It comes in faster than an express train. Listen. Holy baloney. Is it always like this? Twice a day. Worse in the autumn and in the spring. Doesn't it ever break? It will when it gets just about abreast of us. Isn't it exciting? That's one word for it. That's why you don't dare go out on the flats on foot. If the tide was due, you'd never make it ashore. Oh, Michael, it's so thrilling and so good to be alive. I love you. What'd you say? What, sir? Husband. Read that loud and clear. On my way. What's taking you so long? Just brushing my teeth. Please come to bed. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Will you come under the covers? I'm freezing. I'll put some more coal in the fire. I don't want coal. I want my brand new husband. You got him. Oh. What is it, darling? Nothing. It's just... Just that funny smell. It's the cold smoke. Remember, you don't want cold to keep you warm. Just me. Oh, my darling. Yes. 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 My husband. My darling. My husband. You. No. No. Please. No. No. Don't, don't touch me. Go away. No. No. Oh, no. Michael. Your breath. Oh, your heart. Oh, no. 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 I, I cast you out. Michael. Is there anything wrong? No, Aunt Jeannie, why? Well, I, I was dozing and I thought I heard... What, what's that I smell? Is it your candle? Oh, oh, I, I guess I let the fire go out. Aye, it's a damp chimney, but just the same. Is, is Mary Ellen all right? Well, she's sound asleep. See for yourself. Oh, I, I'm sorry to bother you, but... What is it? What's troubling you? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I was the one that dreamed it. Oh, be gentle with her, Michael. She's so sensitive and delicate. Like her mother that died all those years ago. We'll keep her from any harm. Good night, Aunt Jeannie. Oh, good night, Michael, dear. If we can. If it's in human hands to be able to... Snuff my candle out if you will, old Ricky. But hear me this. You'll not have Mary Ellen. You'll not have her like my sister Maggie. Old Ricky could be translated Old Smokey. It's another name for the devil. Jeannie should know better than to mention him, for the old proverb says, Speak of the devil, and his horns appear. Let's see when Mystery Theater returns shortly with Act Two. <laughs> Dreams are made to die with the opening of day. And superstition fades and falters in the sunlight. So by the following morning, we could hope our bride and bridegroom would wake and rise on the right side of the bed. Let's find out as Michael comes downstairs. Oh, good morning, Michael. I'm in the kitchen. Come on out. Morning, Aunt Jeannie. Well, and how is the bridegroom today? Well, the bridegroom's first rate. It's the bride who's not. Oh, What's wrong with the wee lass? Oh, I don't know. I... 
I think now you were right last night. Huh? Right? About what? Oh, she, she had some kind of a, a bad dream. But if she did, she won't tell me about it. W- w- what do you think it might have been? Oh, I don't know. She's a sensitive wee thing. And she's back in the part of the house where her mother died. That, that was Maggie's room you're in. Maybe I should never have put you there. Anyway, I'll get her tea and go on up and have a wee chat. And I couldn't tell Mike. I couldn't. Not after what we... My wedding night. How could I dream anything so... So vile and hideous. That great, gross presence... Bearing down on me. Breath so sick. The lips slavering. And that awful fur. Fur all over. Oh. And the fire burning me. That scorching smell. Oh, Aunt Jeannie. What a nightmare. Oh, wish now. Then that's all it was. But it seems so real. Well, it wasn't. Because when I came by, you were sleeping sound. Oh, drink your tea now. Oh, it's a good thing you married that nice American boy with his head screwed good and tight. Mike. <laughs> He'll blow all the cobwebs out of your head. And he's going to have a good chance to. What do you mean? I mean, you two are going to have a nice honeymoon all alone for a big long month. Where are you going? Oh, I've got an old girl school chum who lives just outside Blackpool at St. Anne on Sea. For years, she's wanted me to visit. I'm not going to drive you out of your house. Oh, you're going to do more than that, Mary Ellen. You and your handsome, bonny husband are going to move downstairs to my room, away from this drafty old flu. And while I'm gone, I'm going to get it fixed so the fire will burn clean. But... And I'll not take no for an answer. I thought Scottish weather was supposed to be terrible. Rainy, damp, no sunshine. This has been a very particular May. Our honeymoon. Yes. Sorry it's over. Desolate. Still, with Aunt Jeannie back, maybe you'll get a little more work done on the book. Darling, I have been busy in research. It is a love story. Speaking of that, do you think... Look down the road. I can't. Your front's in the way. That's Dr. Ferguson bringing Aunt Jeannie back. Our month is up. Speaking of your front, do you know how you blossomed in the last four weeks? All right, playboy, let's concentrate on other physical problems. How do we get out of a hammock without breaking a limb? <laughs> Welcome home, Aunt Jeannie. Oh, Mary Ellen, precious. Oh, you've turned into a real Scots lassie. You've got the bloom on your cheeks. It's happiness. And those warm spring winds from the west. Hello, Dr. Ferguson. Hey, well, Mrs. Tilson. As a physician, I can only concur with your aunt's diagnosis. You're a picture of health. And how are you, Mr. Tilson? Never better, sir. Oh, I can believe that. Well, I really have to be back on rounds. Thank you for meeting Aunt Jeannie at the station. It should have been me. Without a car? Oh, you'd have had hard shrift getting me aboard all this. Since the carriage broke its wheel. You know, Jeannie, you should put that old horse out to pasture. Now she's nothing left to poo. Oh, I couldn't do that. We're too used to each other, poor old soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Ferguson. Away you go. Right you are. See you soon. <laughs> I'll take your bags up to the house, Aunt Jeannie. Oh, give me a hug first. <laughs> That's right. Now, off you go. And me and Mary Ellen will have a week's chat on the way up to the house. Goodbye, Percy. Oh, I should never have said that. <laughs> he hates the name. I'm not sure I blame him. Oh, well, that's not what's on my mind. How are you, dearie? You can see for yourself. Oh, don't say anything to Mike yet. But I just have to tell someone. Aunt Jeannie, I think... I know I'm pregnant. <laughs> 
Well, Mrs. Stilson. Tell me, am I pregnant? Oh, the test will prove it, but I'll bet on it. And let me say that you're the loveliest expected mother I've ever had under my care. Morning sickness is to be expected in these early months. Still. There's nothing wrong, Doctor. Ah, a young, healthy woman, what could be wrong? Still, we must take precautions. I'm writing out some medication for you that I want you to take each day. But what does Dr. Ferguson say is causing it? It's nothing, dear. Just some little hitch. Honey. We both had thorough physical checkups before we came to Scotland. The RH factor is ruled out. Why should you... Lots of women have morning sickness. It isn't only in the morning, Helen. I'll talk to Dr. Ferguson. Maybe we should change the medication. Mary Ellen, dear. I've talked to Dr. Ferguson and he's completely puzzled. I'm not sure that I am, though. Is there anything you want to tell me? What can I tell you, Aunt Jeannie, that I haven't told him? Are you... Are you in pain? I've talked to the doctor about that. It... It isn't pain. It... I don't know. Ellen, are you... Are you dreaming again? Of what? Of... Of the... Presence. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to sleep. Only I don't want to. I don't want to sleep at all. It's just that I'm so tired. So tired. You have to help me, Aunt Jeannie. How, Michael? Dr. Ferguson says that, that physically Mellon should be all right. That the, the baby seems to be thriving. It's her mental state that... Do you know she won't go to sleep at nights? She forces herself to stay awake? What is it she's afraid of dreaming about, Aunt Jeannie? It is that, isn't it? I can't tell you just what she's dreaming. I'm too far out of touch since I went away. But I do know one thing the only way to stop it is to get her away from here. As easy as that? Oh, not so easy, maybe. She's bound and determined on having you finish your book first. Ah, the devil take the book. Melon comes first. You sure you don't mind, Michael? I'm very sure we're going home to have your baby 3,000 miles away. Oh, darling, I don't know what to say. It it can't be too soon for me. Well, it's sooner than you think. We're booked out of Glasgow tomorrow afternoon, home for America. I don't know. I should be feeling all sorts of things, I know, but the only one I can really feel is relief. Oh, such blessed relief. For the first time, as long as I can remember, days, weeks, I just want to go to sleep. Good night, darling. Rest. Sweet dreams. You'll keep me safe. You won't let me come to any harm. For better or worse, in sickness and in health, until death do us. Sleep, poor baby. Rest. I love you, Michael. I love you. Keep our baby safe. Don't let... You'll be all right. I'm fine. Just get him. 
I'll send Aunt Jeannie up to you while I phone. Aunt Jeannie! Aunt Jeannie! What is it? What is it, Michael? Helen, maybe a miscarriage. What's Dr. Ferguson's number? Oh, you know, get him by the phone. He's out of order again. Hello. Hello? Laddie, laddie, it's no use. It won't be fixed before morning. I'll go to the neighbors. It's a party line. If one's out, they're all out. Oh, God! How far do the doctors? A good three miles. Who's got a car? Only Colonel Petrie. And he's away up to Edinburgh for his regimental reunion. All right, then I'll go on foot. Aunt Jeannie, go up and help her. I'll make it as fast as I can. By the way, Michael, can you ride a horse? Yes. Good. Then take old Bessie. There's a bridle and saddle by her in the barn. She'll get you there faster. Take care of her, Aunt Jeannie. Don't let anything happen to her. Right along the first road till you come to town. He's the third house in on the right. And take care of yourself. Michael, so long. Oh, oh, just lie still. Don't bring back the pain. It's funny. I thought it was going to tear me in two. And then within ten minutes after Michael left the house, it just stopped suddenly. As if... What's that? Oh, there's a car. That'll be the doctor. I'll let him in. Bide quiet now. Oh, oh dear. Uh. Oh, oh, come on in, Doctor. What took you so long? Oh, I tried to phone you the moment I found oh, out, and I got here as soon as... Yes. Oh, then you know. Oh, of course I know. Who do you think's been taking care of Mary Ellen? Now you get on up to her and... What? Where's Michael? Oh, Jeannie. Michael is dead. Dead? How? Oh, here, let me close the door. Oh. Was... Was Michael riding to try to fetch me? Oh, of course. She... She thought she was losing the baby. What, what what happened to him? Bess must have thrown him. Oh, she never threw a body in her life. She was Thomas, as gentle something as... Something must have frightened her, driven her frantic. Jeannie, oh. this is a terrible thing to tell you, but... But I examined the boy, and his body was covered with hoof marks. He was literally trampled to death. <laughs> So Ellen has kept her baby and lost her husband. Some evil force shadows this innocent and tragic girl and still may threaten her. Those hoof marks, were they from the horse or in some dark, unfathomable way, were they supernatural, a demon's footprint? Perhaps we'll know when Mystery Theater returns with Act Three. For two weeks, Ellen, after the first wild emotion when she heard of Mike's death, has retreated into herself, her face white and drawn, her eyes black and empty, like two holes burned in a blanket. Now, as the doctor comes down, after examining her... How is she today, doctor? No change. Listless, unreachable, hopeless. And her health. The baby. The baby... Yeah, there's no doubts of its vitality. Oh, I, I have a terrible time getting her to eat anything. Well, you must be more successful than you think, Jeannie. There's nothing the matter with Mary Ellen physically. No, it's her mental health that concerns me. The poor Baron has been through a terrible shock, Percy. Yeah, I know. You, you don't think there is any chance of her losing her mind? Jeannie, Mary Ellen is beyond me and my knowledge. Somehow we've got to call in a psychiatrist. Oh, Percy. What is it you're afraid of for Mary Ellen? <laughs> well, you don't like my medical terms. I want to know. Very well, then. Schizophrenia. More specifically, dementia precox. Paranoid type, I guess. Oh, well, what does all that mean? Oh, withdrawal from life, delusions of all kinds, persecution, unseen enemies, that sort of thing. Oh, the second sight. Just... Just like all of us. Now that's enough of that nonsense. You're all sensitive, delicately balanced women, but all things being equal, perfectly normal. Well, I have other calls to make. Oh, well, I, I'll walk you to the door. Any instructions for Mary Ellen? Oh, just that she keep on with the sedation I've provided. And Jeannie, try to persuade her to let me call in another doctor. I'll... 
I'll see what's best to do. Be very careful. I'll do what's right. Yeah, I think maybe tonight I'll take a run up to Glasgow and have a consultation with a friend of mine there, Dr. Engel. Good man. Maybe I could persuade him to run back down here with me just to observe her. Oh, by the way, till, till I see what I can do first, eh? eh? All right. Another day or so can't do any harm. I hope. <laughs> It's Aunt Jeannie, Mary Ellen. May I come in? If you want. I thought you might like a wee cup of tea. No, thanks. What are you staring at? Out the window. The sole way. The tide just came in. Roaring and boiling. So fast. And now the water's all smooth. And with the sun on it, everything's wiped clean. I wonder if it heals as it washes over. What are you thinking about, child? I'm thinking about the first time I showed the tide to... to Michael. The day we were married. The day you said it was bad luck for us to see each other before the wedding. Oh, I was just joking about superstitions... Nobody believes those old wives' tales. Nobody believes so many things that are outside the ordinary. So many things they say don't exist but might be. Did you see Michael's body after? What? Did you see the marks of the hooves? Oh, don't talk about that, lass. I know they said the horse trampled him. I asked Dr. Ferguson about the hooves and he wouldn't tell me. You'd tell me, wouldn't you, Jeannie? What? Oh, Tell you what? Were they like horseshoes? Or were they cleft in two? Were they cloven hooves? In the name of God, what are you saying? I'm not speaking of God. I'm speaking of the devil. Or some demon that haunts my dreams. Now, this is no time for foolish fancies. You mustn't let dreams spill over into your real life. Or is it the other way around? Oh, Mary Ellen... I don't know what it is you have on your mind, but... You can get me to Michael. Let me talk to Michael. He'll know. He can tell me what to do. Take me to Michael and Jeannie. Take me to him. Oh. Oh, can I, Mary Ellen? You know he's... I know he's dead. I know he's passed beyond. But you can reach him. You can hold a seance. No. Oh, no. I swore I never would again after what... After what happened that night when something got loose... Some evil presence. Something from... Auntie, you let him loose. The least you can do is help me undo the harm. I can't. I won't. I'll get the doctor. You dare to bring him here and I'll kill myself. I swear it. Child, you're out of your... No. Not yet. But if you don't have that seance and let me find out from Michael what to do... I will be. I'll lose my mind. You've got to promise. Promise. Oh, calm down, child. Calm down. It's Tonight. Not... Now. No, that isn't possible. There's... There have to be more than two to form a circle. Then call in the colonel and that other woman, anyone. Just promise me. Promise. I need him. I need Michael. Promise, Aunt Jeannie. Promise. May God forgive me. I... I... I promise. May we all join hands, please. Clear your minds. Make them a blank. A quiet place. Open and hushed. I'm reaching now... Reaching away and above and out and over from here to the bonny, bonny other place that lies beyond our ken. Can you hear me, Anatu? Can you come to me into our circle? 
Oh, Natu, we're reaching for you. Oh, I can't make contact. Ask for Michael. I have no way to him. Then let me. Oh, try it. Everyone, concentrate. Be still. Be still. Michael. Michael, I need you. Come to me. Oh, Michael, I love you. I love you. We'll be together again. Michael. It's not our child you're carrying. Get rid of it. Michael! It's no use, child. There's no contact tonight. We can break the ring. Will someone turn on the light, please? Oh, I'm that sorry, Mary Ellen. It's all right, Aunt Jeannie. You gave me what I wanted. I found out what I needed to know. Oh, I'm afraid that's quite impossible, my dear. You're not as backward as that, Dr. Ferguson. Then help me. I can't, dear. It's too late. What do you mean, too late? When you came to me a few weeks ago and we determined your pregnancy, you must have known that I would know it was already well advanced. But it wasn't. Michael and I were only married a month before that. You should know that. Well, of course I know that, my dear, but facts are facts. You're carrying a child that's past midterm. And abortion now is just too dangerous. Past midterm? Four and a half months? My guess is at least five. That fast? Oh, God, no. It mightn't wait. It could be born any minute. There's no one to help me but myself. Well, I'll drive you home, child. And I'll give you something to get a little rest. She's sound asleep now, Jeannie. Let's go downstairs and talk. Mm. Poor wee angel. So thin and pale and haunted. I, I, come away. Let her rest. What you gave, you'll never take away. Never? It's never going to be. Help me. God, help me. The tide. The tide. Yes, that's the way. Full moon. The time was right. And for our own protection, I see no other way, Jeannie. But to lock her away... Well, we're not locking her up. It's a sanitarium. It's a really lovely place. I don't think I could do it to her. I, I, I'll care for her. Jeannie, dear, if Ellen had preeclampsia or a threatened miscarriage or any one of a number of other diseases of pregnancy, she would have to be hospitalized. Now, think of it that way. All right, Percy, if you think it's best. It's the only way. Oh, no, doctor. Mine is the only way. Oh, that sounded like the front door. Ellen. Oh, I'll, I'll check upstairs. You look outside. Oh, but I thought you said she... Oh, dear Lord. I got the premonition. Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen? Are you out there? Jeannie! Jeannie! It's better. She's gone. No. I gave her enough sedation to knock her out, but she's gone. Oh, but where? I heard where? she's out on the first. Come on, Jeannie. We've got to catch her before the time. Look! 
There wasn't a chance. We couldn't have saved him. My poor wee motherless lamb. It, it did not take her long to follow her poor husband. But, but the child... It hadn't been born, and she didn't want it. It wasn't Michael's, you know. Uh, are you sure of that? Oh, yes. It was five months old at least from the size. A monster. No, I didn't say that. Still, I was thinking of x-rays. There was something strange about that embryo. I can't quite explain. It was nothing you could have understood, Doctor. So, at the last, it was all the Lord's will. And maybe for the best, at least... Michael and my Mary Ellen are in God's pocket at last. I'll be back in a moment with a final thought. Who dreams on the Solway will wake in another world? Our story has come full circle. For us, it's the end. Let's hope that for Ellen and Michael, it's only a beginning. If you believe some incubus possessed poor Ellen, driving her and her husband to their death, there's another explanation. Insanity did run in her family. So either way, even if there were the devil to pay, it was still all in the mind. Our cast included Jada Rowland, Nick Pryor, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.